I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Call to Coach, a special Clifton Strength Summit edition, recorded on September 14th, 2016. This special edition of Call to Coach was designed to highlight some of the more popular sessions that were given during the Clifton Strength Summit in 2016. We'll be interviewing session leaders on the best material of their sessions. Stephanie Moore is our guest today. Stephanie is the co-director of Catholic Life and Faith and a session partner with Bridges Leadership Development Process. Stephanie is also the founding member of Catholic Strengths and Engagement Community and is also a trained strengths coach for Gallup. Stephanie presented at the Clifton Strengths Summit on being a steward of your strengths. Stephanie, always great to see you. Welcome back to Call the Coach. Thank you so much, Jim. I'm glad to be here. No, it's good to have you. We, uh, we're excited to have you on. We're going to kind of talk through. You are one of our summit leaders. We have a guest that will come on here in just a second, but we, uh, well, let's, get, let's catch up with you real quick. Your presentation sure. at the summit, can you kind of give us a quick overview? Let's just dive right in. What were you, uh, what were you giving there at the summit? Well, and before I get into that, I just want to say congratulations on a great inaugural summit. We, a number of us attended uh, from the Catholic faith, and you could feel the energy in the room. It, it was so inspiring to hear the history, to hear the tribute to Don Clifton, and it was interesting that one of the themes that came through in the summit was this idea of being a spark, and it was funny because that was the theme of my presentation. So I started my presentation actually acknowledging a number of the people that were in the room that have been really the catalysts in the Catholic faith bringing strengths into their communities. And I, I was highlighting a, a couple of people. One was Father John Grace. He was brought on as the campus minister at Virginia Tech right after the horrific shootings. And he attended a diocesan event where he heard Father Bill Hansen talk about using strengths as a way to bring hope. And that's exactly what he did. He said, I saw that tool as something I could bring back to these students and give them hope. And that's what he did. And, you know, he, he has so many stories to share about the impact that strengths had on those young people. The other person I highlighted was Rick Fersh, who's the uh, director of stewardship up in the Archdiocese of Seattle. He heard Father Bill Hansen actually speak at a very large conference on stewardship and Father Bill was talking about again all of the success he had been having at his parish St. Gerard Magella and so Rick brought it back as the number one way that they were going to implement leadership development for 127 of their parishes and so they work in partnership with the Catholic Leadership Institute and they are making huge strides in bringing it in as training pastors as well as their lay leaders. And then I, I actually got involved in Strengths in about 2008 as part of a, a program I was attending, and it was a pastoral ministry school. And in the last year, I heard about this amazing work being done by the Gallup organization in the faith world and ended up with a white paper that had been written on Father Bill's Parish, and so you can see that the theme in all of these stories is this man, Father Bill Hansen, who happens to be with us today. And I thought, Jim, when you asked me to come here, I couldn't do it without Father Bill because he has truly been the catalyst. He's been our initial spark. He has lit the flame of inspiration in so many parishes across the United States. And so I thought it would be great to hear a little of his story. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Sure. Uh, listening to your introduction makes me feel like patient zero. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, I'm the one who started all this mess. But in any case, um, it's really gratifying to hear that and to hear all these stories. Uh, for me, it started in uh, February 6th, uh, 5th and 6th, 2002, believe it or not. Uh, I just found my Gallup name tag from the inaugural summit on a member... Uh, congregational engagement for members. And I went down to it in Washington with the uh, uh, co-pastor I was working with, Father Chris Heller. And uh, <clears throat> we had no idea how so many of our very long-standing questions about what's wrong with the organizational life of the church. Why are we, you know, we used to say, um, we're having fun here. How come more people don't come? And of those who come, how come more of them don't stay and hang around? And of those who stay and hang around, how come more of them don't do stuff around here? 
we get this invitation in the fall of 2001 from Gallup telling us about their research for churches. We found out that like something like over 100,000 pastors had been invited to this. We found out later. So we went to Washington figuring, ah, it's, maybe they've got an answer to our question. Well, boy, we got the answer in spades. So the first day was on congregational engagement, uh, the 12 items and attitudes that uh, attitudes and behaviors that really bring life to a community. And we also, in the second day, found out about StrengthsFinder and that this was the supercharge or the super glue of uh, helping people to belong, which eventually would lead to their believing. So we began in 2002 with this, uh, with um, measuring engagement and trying to act that stuff out. And in 2004, Gallup's Living Your, Living Your Strengths book came out. Al Winsman worked with Kurt Liesveld on that. And of course it was Don Clifton's research. And this was the application of StrengthsFinder, the standard StrengthsFinder in churches. Well, <clears throat> our measurement scores went through the roof when StrengthsFinder started because people were getting connected to their innate or their God-given talents as Gallup Faith says. And it, it just made a world of a difference. Bottom line on all this, uh, all of our questions were answered. And by 2015, the parish was having annual operating surpluses over $100,000, no problem getting volunteers, a wonderful welcoming spirit. The local uh, civic community, as a matter of fact, regarded us as one of the three centers of life in Port Jefferson Station, Terryville which uh, Al Winsman, our Gallup Faith um, uh, moderator, coach, said was really the goal of all of this, you know, to help churches to contribute to the local society and bring life back to everybody. And we had a lot of people from the community come in and learn their strengths, along with 800 parishioners who learned their strengths. And you can just imagine, I mean, anybody who's been to the, the summit or is involved in StrengthsFinder knows if you're part of an organization that is 800 people who know their top five, and recognize the, the themes in each other as well as themselves, that is, that's someplace where the spark has turned into a bonfire. Yeah. How do you think the, the core, so, you know, a typically StrengthsFinder Q12, you know, the, the, the questions you ask are a version of our Q12 and then StrengthsFinder is a piece of those. Typically those are corporate focused and a lot of people know us as kind of that corporate entity. How do you see that, Father Bill? How do you see that different in the church or is it? with a little twist, how do you see the differences between a corporate focus and a spiritual focus or what's going on in our faith groups? Well, a lot of times I'm talking to people in my parish. Just the other night, I had a conversation with a guy who's with Hilton Hotels, who are now a Gallup client. And the two of us all of a sudden launched into this common language we had of engagement. And it's really about human organizations, regardless of what their focus is. Uh, and for, you know, for those of us in the Catholic world who are using this in churches, the application is instantaneous, uh, at least for, for most of us, because we see uh, the cooperation among people. This is, uh, we've got a whole spiritual language around that, but it's, it's how humans act. And, uh, you know, as Don Clifton used to say, you're at your best when you're focused on your talents. And uh, the spiritual and, and religious language around that, scriptural language, certainly. And so, uh, from our point of view, it's a seamless transition from doing it in the corporate world or doing it in the church world. Yeah. Stephanie, let me ask you that same question. Yeah. Well, how would you respond to that? Well, it's interesting because as Father Bill was talking, I, you know, I live both of my, I've lived my life in both worlds. I, I have a, a fairly large corporate practice as well as faith. And I was just out at Cisco where they're actually implementing company-wide a very big strengths movement. And the senior VP of HR uh, got up and said, we want you to be able to come in and feel that you can make a significant impact, not only here in this organization, but in the world. So you're starting to see this blend, this, this, uh, you know, this coming together of, you know, both, both worlds, right? And understanding that, you know, what we experience every week in our faith, we take out in our, in the secular world. And so it's just amazing to see what's going on at that transition from one to the other. Father and Bill, Jim, Jim, oh, if go I ahead. could add on to yeah. that, um, at yeah. the summit, which I, I agree with Stephanie, it was a, a, a really wonderful experience. But at the summit, I was went to all kinds of workshops and got into all kinds of conversations with people. And 
absolutely across the board, no matter who I was talking to, whether they were from the university world or uh, Gallup corporate clients or whatever, when they heard that I was doing this in a church, regardless of their religious background, every single person said, really? Tell me more about that. How does that work? I'm really thrilled to hear. I wish they were doing that at my <laughs> church. So I yeah. think that, that people at the summit, certainly, who would be very yeah. highly motivated and experienced, they certainly got the easy transition. Absolutely. Father Bill, at what point did you know, you know, you, you, you covered a big span, like you started this in 2002 and then you jumped to 2015. At what point in the continuum did you kind of know you, you caught on to something and what were some indicators to you? What did you see that led you to believe like, Hey, this, this is really working. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the tough things I think all organizations have, but certainly churches do too, is getting volunteers. You know, you hear people say, oh, well, we've been doing this for a long time. We got to get new blood in here. But nobody really knows how to get new blood in. Once we started having people learn their themes of talent and discuss it in a group, spontaneously, these people said, what have you got going here in the parish uh, as a place where I can use these talents? Or they would say to us, you know, I've really always wanted to visit people in the hospital, or I've always wanted to work with um, people who are disadvantaged. And I know that I've got the talent to do that. So it kind of turned the whole uh, volunteer thing upside down. And as Stephanie was talking in her workshop, it's really a stewardship issue. This is the, the, the biblical word of the person who's put their strengths to work is the good steward. So I, that was a, certainly the eye opener for us. Stephanie, in, in some cases, mm. and, and Father Bill, I'll throw this to both of you guys, the church is volunteer and the corporations voluntold, right? And so, <laughs> right? And so there's a little bit of a difference. We're getting paid to do what we do here in the right. enterprise, and yet we're not in the church. How have you guys seen that? Is there a difference there when you're working with an organization and you're thinking about engagement where there's high buy-in or high ownership mm. from a volunteer perspective? I think that's a big that's a big difference between what we do in, in the faith and in that. So Stephanie, let me start with you. Do you see a difference or do you have to do anything different when we think about, uh, you know, the, in the faith practice, because these are, it's a heavy volunteer um, um, base. So something I've seen evolve over the years is we, when we initially went out, we were really focused on the individual, you know, getting them to understand how they can use their God given talents in, in any sort of ministry and, and even beyond. What's, what's happening now is we're being brought in to look at more of a team focus to really figure out how do we come together as a community and really leverage the gifts and talents of everybody in that community. And that takes it to a whole nother level. I had a woman at a, a recent retreat I did come up and say, you know, I never considered the power, the exponential power of working together from a strengths-based team approach. And that changes the whole dynamic for me because I used to think this was just a nice thing for me to know about myself. Never considered what we could do in community. And, and really, when you think in the faith world, that's the body of Christ. That's what we, we, we say Sunday after Sunday, we come together in community. So when you can apply it in that way, it just takes it to a whole nother level. Yeah, and you know, Jim, as a person who's been working in the volunteer world for a long time, I used to sort of envy corporate world uh, in the sense that it had money as a motivator in terms of salary. And then uh, at our fir very first um, impact session on engagement down in Gallup, um, Al Winsman was telling us that, the, and actually this came out at the inaugural summit, that the key motivator, even in the business world, was do I get a chance to do what I do best? Mm -hmm. And I had a bigger motivating effect than salary did. And I said to myself, wow, I guess the salary thing doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, we're, we're, now that we're connected with StrengthsFinder, we've got probably the best octane, <laughs> octane fuel you can have to get people motivated and to bring them together. I think, you know, Jim, you asked the excellent question, how did we know, what did we notice was happening that told us things were different? Um, when people started to say to other people, do you have a ranger? Is that your arranger at work? I knew it. I, I, I could see that anywhere. Or one, as one uh, probably 85-year-old lady said to me, she was a volunteer in the local hospital, and she said, you know, Father, I'm really glad I've, I've learned my strengths. And I said, really? What, why is that? Oh, she said, I'm much nicer to the girls at work. <laughs> And I said, well, what do you mean by that? She said, well, I don't, they haven't done their strengths and I don't know if they'll ever do them, but I know they have them. Mm -hmm. And I look at them in an entirely different way. 
Right. So I, I think these are some of these signs of transformation happening. Yeah, I think um, you, you're on to something there, right? As that spark, we, we see that too. Uh, Stephanie, let me throw, let me throw this uh, over to you as well. That mission and purpose concept, right? Very, yeah. very strong in what we find even in the enterprise environment where people right. come to a job, the millennials and some of our millennial, millennial reports, no, big time. we're seeing, right? That mission and purpose is a big deal. And so do you find in your work, is it easier in a faith setting uh, to, to do mission and purpose? Or is that still something that has mm. to be, you know, has to really be transferred to the congregation in their environment? How does that work? Or how are you seeing that work? Well, it's interesting you ask that because I think that's something that, we have real opportunity to do within faith communities that maybe we don't even have as much in the corporate world. We, we really have this kind of already embedded culture that, that looks at our mission uh, in our faith. I think the, the struggle is, you know, doing things within faith communities that you can sustain, you know, that you constantly keep this in focus. You find different ways in which to apply strengths, you know, for instance, in a lot of parishes, they'll use strengths as part of their confirmation prep. You know, so they start early with with kids and helping them understand what their talents are, so that they can utilize them as they go out into the world. Or in marriage prep, when couples are coming together, or in leadership development of councils and and staff. You know, there are. I think the way that you continue to reinforce the mission is by making sure that this is systemic in a in a faith community that we're we're approaching it from all different angles and then leading to the ultimate mission of the church yeah you mentioned some great areas there i think that oh, i'm going to start am i stuttering again on the video a little bit okay hold on we'll give it just a second sorry roy you're going to have some serious edits to do to get this one on. <laughs> i think uh i think i'm back i'm a little grainy but we'll try this again um three two one. Yeah, Stephanie, I, I, think, um, uh, I think when we look at all the opportunities that, it, that the churches have in this, and you just mentioned a few when we think about in faith, not just that the individuals know their themes, their strengths and what they're doing, but tying those two important uh, life events that yes. happen, right? Well, you mentioned confirmation being one of those things or marriage counseling or family counseling, those things that, that might be happening. Um, Father Bill, let me ask you, how, how, when we think of those moments and we think of the spiritual impact that those have, uh, churches are often receptive or faith groups are often receptive in this idea of a spiritual gifts inventory or whatever, right? When we think about that, how is strengths, is, is that the same thing or is it different in your opinion? And how, how does that come together? Well, you've, you've just <laughs> asked the $64,000 question because uh. while we see this tremendous interrelationship between the social science research that Gallup has done and the, uh, the behaviors that come out of our scriptural and our uh, you know, pastoral traditions, the one question we're all a little bit stumped on is the relationship between the spiritual gifts identified in scripture and the strengths finder results. And I have to tell you the best that I've come up with so far, and I keep asking everybody I meet about this, is that um, well, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that the charisms, the spiritual gifts identified in St. Paul, are special gifts to assist a person to carry out their uh, initial grace from God, the grace that created them there. We call it sanctifying grace. In, you know, it's amazing grace. So I think, from my, in my personal opinion, my experience, that the strengths finder results help us to identify that fundamental gift of our creation, the self-gift of God, as we call it, that manifests itself in these patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting uh, with very specific uh, qualities to it. And that the charisms that are mentioned in the scripture or what we do with confirmation kids, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, are additional gifts or aids, powers, virtues, which help us carry out the fundamental, we would say sanctifying grace, uh, the social science research of Gallup would say you are innate talents, which fr from my point of view, um, all of the evidence around talent just speaks of something eternal. We didn't pick them out of the list of 34. They, we revealed them by our responses, what was already there. Um, and the fact, uh, I had a guy, a former student of mine, 
who is a works for Honeywell, which is a Gallup client. And uh, at, a, at a class reunion, I gave all of these former students copies of StrengthsFinder. And one of them came up to me and said, you know, we do this at work, he said, at Honeywell. And I have to tell you, you know, e every month is a flavor of the month at Honeywell. But he said, three years after doing StrengthsFinder, people are still talking about this. The fact that, you know, it's one in 33 million to find somebody else with your same top five. And yet there's so much of these, the pieces that go together with strengths that we all share together. Well, all of those are, are like infinite qualities. Uh, and I, so, so to me, I would say that strengths fighter has hit the jackpot. The arrow is hit the center of the target at helping us to reveal in revealing our truest selves, revealing the self that is a gift from our divine creator. That's how I'd respond to that. Yeah. No, good answer. Stephanie, anything you want to add to that in your experience? Well, well, in my experience, having I I've spent a lot of years with spiritual gift in, inventory before knowing about the Strengths Finder, and and I I used to talk a lot about the fact that when we would hold an event, I was always surprised that we didn't get you know a, a packed audience, and when I would question, people would be really skeptical about the spiritual gifts. Not that they didn't acknowledge them, but they were fearful about what that would mean if they really did uncover what those were about. And it was interesting that when Strengths Fighter came along, there was still this, this grace to it that you knew there was something very spiritual about it, and yet it was able to reach many more people. And, and I've come to be, really believe that when you look at the spiritual charisms, you know, really what that call is, the talents are what help us define the how, how we're going to live out that charism. So if I have a charism of teaching or leadership, uh, wisdom, you know, the, the talent themes help me understand how those are going to be expressed. And when I've shared that with other people, it's kind of helped them get their, their head wrapped around the two and how they, they really work together as well. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I often say on the, we get the question all the time, can StrengthsFinder be used as a selection tool? In other words, can I select employees? And we always say, no, it's not tuned for that. It, it's the how, right? The selection is the what. StrengthsFinder is the how. This is what I hear exactly. you saying. So the, the spiritual gifts inventory are these inventories that we do where we track down a, a job, so to speak. And that's really what right. those do, whether it's going to be teaching or leading mm -hmm. or serving or some of those things, right? right. That's the what. And then StrengthsFinder brings that. Now, how am I going to bring that? We still need teachers. All the teachers won't be the same themes. That's right. Right? They're going to be different That's themes because exactly they're going right. to bring different components to it. And so it's funny how that translates. Uh, we, don't, we don't put those two together in the corporate world and in the faith world, but it really is still the same idea, right? We it have is. these things that tell us what to do, and then these are the things that, uh, of how to do it. So I'm glad to hear that from both of you in that that's, uh, that's working. When we think about what's going on, Stephanie, and, and churches or faith groups getting involved, right. uh, that word church is very American, and it, 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 when we bleed out internationally as we think about faith groups, what have you seen? Uh, I mean, is it just as simple as buying some materials and jumping in? Or what have you seen when we think about the stewardship of this? What have you seen some best practices on how that works correctly or best? Well, I, I think the way it works best within a faith community is that that community has a vision around this, right? That they don't just go in and do Strengths Finder because then it becomes a spa day. You know, it's like we all feel great. Now what do we do? And that's, I think we learned that early on. We would go in and we do these retreats or we do these small groups and then people were still kind of wondering, well, what now? And so what we've seen now parishes do really well is tie to ministry, tie to outreach, tie to, you know, the structures of the parish. Like we talked about before, whether it's, you know, making sure that all of our leaders are formed and understand the connection between our talents and being good stewards so that that then cascades into the rest of the parish. So it's important that we start with leadership in a parish, make sure that they have a vision around this so that they can see what that future state looks like. If we do it really well, what's that going to look like? And then make sure that we equip everybody with that language, with the process, with, you know, understanding their talents, and then look at it not only from the individual perspective, but that team focus. How can we come together as ministry teams? How can we come together, you know, as a group of confirmation, you know, students? And, and how can we really experience what it means to live in community out of our talents and, and strengths? 
So I'll pose this question to both of you. Have in, in the corporate environment, we oftentimes it manifests itself by posting the top five. It's your workstation, right? So right. that's that's a big deal for a lot of companies to even do that. Uh, I've been a Gallup for almost ten years now, and I, I can't think of a world where you don't do that. Yeah. So it's pretty awesome. <laughs> what what have you guys seen in mm. in faith? Right, we don't have. Uh, we don't come to church and get work in cubes, right? Yeah. We don't, um, even in, in a teacher setting, you, you might you right. have highly mobile environments where people are constantly, mm -hmm. you might have a classroom, so to speak, and it may be used three different ways over the course of a weekend. And so posting even a teacher's top five, have you guys cracked the code on that in any way to keep the top five in front of people? Well, well, we did the thing at my last parish with uh, name tags, uh, and everybody who did strengths had their name tag with their top five on it. We also had a directory in the lobby of the, uh, pa of the parish center. And if you wanted to look anybody up, well, we used to, we used to post them around like a, in the post office, you know, all the criminals on the wall. We, <laughs> Wanted we had them, signs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a big lobby and we had, we had them, well, we ran out of room. I mean, you know, 800 people long before that we had to do something else. So we had them in binders and people were always at the binders looking somebody up. Uh, sometimes uh, if a particular project needed to be done, we'd go to the binders to find somebody in terms of their top five, knowing that they'd have some gifts in that regard. Um, we even when Al Winsman, uh, who was our mo uh, moderator and coach for engagement came for the first time to the parish, for the impact session, we had about 200 people show up and we decided to have a costume party. I love it. And everybody so came dressed as one of their top five. It was hysterical because it, it was one of the best strengths instructional communication nights ever because people would be asking each other, well, why do you have that on? Or they'd recognize it immediately or they'd say, oh, you, you obviously have deliberative. This one guy came with caution tape wrapped around them, you know. It was great. And a helmet. And we got a, a tri-colored admiral's hat, you know, tri-pointed admiral's hat for Al Winsman, because command <laughs> is his top. Well, you know, that was a long time ago, and it was only right. a one-time event, but it right. created this buzz. Uh, so these are some of the, the sort of the little tchotchkes or MacGuffins that we've put into practice to try to get it out there. Stephanie, anything you've seen? Yeah, so I just spent, this is my second year going down working with a Catholic high school, and this particular director, she does this wonderful thing where she creates these big flip chart size posters, and she's got everybody's top five, and then there's this big area and space for people to take sticky notes and put affirming notes based on that person's top five and how they they experience it. And then those posters stay up all year long, and those posters get filled with just tons of these bright colored stickies and then that's given back to these these student leaders at the end of of the year and I just think what a gift you know to have all that affirmation going on and to have those top five always visible but there are a lot of parishes like St. Joseph up in Vancouver who they have a huge wall and it takes the scripture quote you are the vine we are the branches and this huge tree and off of every branch there are leaves and every leaf is a person's face with their top five and it just it goes down this entire hallway I mean so there's things like that that parishes are doing that are just so inspiring when you walk in and it makes you want to get your top five and be yeah. a part of that. Well, let me let me work off of that. Uh, churches or or faith groups can be high turnover, and so you have new people <laughs> come in all the time. Yes. Uh, Stephanie, how are you handling? You know, what, what's some advice on handling that high turnover? Do you just give them? You know, first Sunday they're there. Hey, you got to take top. You know, you got to yeah. take strength finder. How, how, how have you guys seen that work? So it, it takes a, uh, again. It goes back to that vision. So it's got to be a part ingrained in our culture that we. It is important for us to know everyone's, you know, top five talents. And so as part of the welcoming, you know, people are brought in and there's an orientation. And part of that is bringing in the strengths finder and, again, tying it back to the vision of the parish. Um, and then from there, they are offered small group opportunities, you know, that all focus on strengths finder living um, the journey uh, process. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's just realizing that it's what you 
what you experience as part of being in this in this community. Yeah, I love the fact that you said in the context of small groups because I think that's yeah. the, that's a really good place to introduce that. You know, showing up on a Sunday and give them a book with a code it doesn't right, no. necessarily give a lot of context, but no. introducing that we know that strengths really are best developed in the context of a relationship with another person, right? Or Absolutely. A coach, from that standpoint, and so you can have small group group leaders. Uh, Father Bill, any other thoughts when you think about high turnover? in parishes or in churches that mm -hmm. things you might caution or stuff that's worked for you? Well, when we started putting up the pictures around the lobby, we had a large lobby at St. Gerard's. Um, it created a context and new people coming in would, you know, would see it week after week or whatever. And eventually they'd say, what's all that about? You know, if, if, if they hadn't had it explained and they'd say, oh, and as I would go around giving presentations about this, the question I was asked mostly was, did, did having all those pictures up, did it make people feel like they were outsiders to all of that? Not, not within the context of the parish. I think people sort of took it as, it, they absorbed it as decoration. And then on uh, once or twice <laughs> or maybe three times a year, we'd, we'd have people who had been in strengths groups and had been using their strengths and become conscious of it we'd have them get up uh, during mass, during the homily time, I'd introduce them, they'd give a, they'd give a little witness talk. Uh, I first heard about strengths when I was out of it and didn't know what was going on. My negative reaction was, oh, it's all this crazy nonsense, you know, whatever their version of that was. What changed my mind and how it's benefited my life? And on the basis of that, we'd get all kinds of people signing up and we'd have some groups set up uh, based on the convenience of the leader and people would join a group based on what was a good night for them. And, and that's basically how we spread it out to 800 people. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, have you seen small groups using team grids effectively in, in the work at all? And uh, it, has that worked? Absolutely. Again, it goes back to, you know, now when we go out, uh, in fact, uh, my co-director Lisa Eisinger is out this week talking about stewardship and, and working with leaders. And every time we do that, it all, you know, it takes – the strength finder we look at the four domain grid and help orchestrate what those teams look like and so it's been very very much a part of what we do and very i think beneficial to have people look at it from that team perspective yeah it's it i think that tool just goes right across you know there's yeah. nothing you need to change you you plug it in it makes yeah. sense to people and then and then as the groups uh, start forming together I, I think one of the things we found is each group takes on its own unique identity and sharing yeah. those team grids back with the small group leader or whoever's administrating that in the organization can then kind of put master team lists together. So when opportunities, we talked about mission and purpose earlier, right. when opportunities come up to serve, they can begin to look at those groups and funnel those opportunities down to the groups based on maybe how the team is is lined mm -hmm. up, right? If mm -hmm. it's a situation where relationship building is important, they can say, hey, we got some teams. Oh, I bet we have a team that's heavy in relationship building and they would just love to take this opportunity to, to be able to do that. Father Bill, did, did that work? Have you seen that work in a parish where you've been oh. able to pinpoint groups and send stuff downstream based on the group profile? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of getting a staff to work together and leaders, uh, I'm in a new parish now that had some experience of doing strengths uh, last couple of years before I got there. So when the staff got together, actually Lisa Anslinger, who works with uh, Stephanie, uh, came out and uh, we all, most of the staff had done their themes of talent, uh, but she helped us and, we, and the grid was our, our key focus and learning what domains we were each in. It's easier sometimes to remember what domain a person is in than remembering specifically what their top five are. And you, you, know, you could hear people say, oh, this must be why it's easy for us to do this, but difficult for us to do that uh, in terms of, you know, we're very high relationship building as I think many parish staffs are. Uh, so um, some things come out more easily in, uh, than others, but that keeping that, that focus has been a, a really terrific thing. Yeah. And I would add one other thing too is when we've been going out and you know talking about the domains and the the team strength um we've tried to have them have an experience of it so we'll put them into small groups and we'll have them just map out the the strengths of that particular table and then we give them all an assignment you know something that they have to plan and they can only use the talent themes that are sitting at that table and it's amazing how quickly they come up with the answer and 
in 15 minutes they all have these well thought out plans and everybody's been assigned to doing different things and there's such an energy so they get this first hand experience of wow if we really did this in real life what would that look like and and how could it really transform you know how we approach anything yeah. so it's been cool. No. I think the power of Strengths Finder oftentimes is it gives us a framework, right? It's not magic. Yes. It's not voodoo, right? It's just right. a framework to think about each other. In the corporate environment, right. this is where it's maybe different. We see each other every day for the most part, right? We see each other right. more than we don't. In, the, right. in, in faith groups, that's the opposite, right? We only see each other once a week. And if you miss a week, it could be two or three before you mm -hmm. see somebody. That's so, true. Stephanie, I think you hit it right on the head. You, got, you get groups together and you can quickly make decisions you can quickly get movement on things with a group that doesn't know each other very well because you can yeah. quickly move to the, what's the best of me, right? That yeah. concept, what, here's the best of me and here's how to use it. I, I'm assuming you're seeing those kinds of experiences accelerate groups that aren't together very often. Would that, would that be accurate? Absolutely. I, I have. I mean, I, I think of my own pastor, Father Ron, who for many years, we never knew what he was doing in the meetings that he'd attend. He'd sit back and he'd doodle and he would draw cathedrals because that he's an artist and that was his thing. And he would doodle, doodle, doodle. And we found out he, his top five, four of them are in strategic thinking. I realized that he's just waiting. He's listening. He's getting all of the input. And we learned that if we, we paused and asked him at the end, what do you think? He would jump up and draw this amazing plan on the on the whiteboard. So we went out and invested and bought him this huge uh, box of dry erase markers. So that was his thing. That changed the dynamic of how we viewed him and and how he felt valued for what he brought to the team. So it was little things like that that just kind of reinforced for us. Yep, this is the way we need to come together every time we think about yeah. doing anything. No, that's good. That's a good word picture, by the way, when you think about that. Him drawing cathedrals is this great kind of analogy of building the structure, right? Yes. Of, and and yeah. so he's that was his outlet of thinking and and so here here he is building that. And then your guys are utilizing that by by then taking what he had and right. listening to it as he does it on a whiteboard. Stephanie, anything else in your session, questions that were asked or anything that you guys covered that we might not have I might not have asked that question that was important to the essence of your session there? I think that people are always asking the question, how do we get started? You know, what's the very first thing we should do if we're thinking about bringing this in? And, you know, my, again, I go back to, you, you've got to get people, you've got to figure out who that core group is going to be that's going to be the spark. Because if you don't have the spark, then it's going to burn out really quickly. And so you, you've got to get the pastor on board. You've got to get the leadership on board. You've got to figure that out. Don't just go in kind of on your own because, You've got a lot of, you know, energy that may want to put it down and you need to have that core team really well developed in order for it to, to really work. Sure. Father Bill, I'll ask you this, that same question. Anything that you, you'd add that, that uh, we may not have talked about? Well, just to say that, um, again, going back to that earlier question, what was a marker that things had changed because of strengths? Uh, two things. People who are regulars... Uh, who come to church with some kind of frequency, StrengthsFinder gave them a way to transition from thinking in, in religious terminology or scriptural terminology to their everyday life and then back again seamlessly. Oh, this is, this is from God, but it, it helps me do my job better. It helps me discipline. I can understand my kids better. And that's a big, big goal. I mean, from our point of view, from church world, is to say that church world is the whole world. Strengths Finder is the most effective tool in getting that done. Mm -hmm. The other thing which is related to that is we used to have uh, the county would have um, injections and, and shots for people who were uh, not able to afford health care. And, and they did it at our church. And there were two very lovely nurses who would come in uh, every month. And we all, everybody on the staff got to know them. I have no idea what religion they were or whether they went to church or anything like that. But they saw all these pictures around the wall with the five words under them. And one day they said, could you explain what all that is about? So I start talking about Strengths Finder and whatever. Well, they were totally interested in what we were doing. They had a million questions. They wanted to know all about it. And after the session was over, I said to myself, how many other things are we doing here that would have gotten that kind of excited response? 
Now, we see it from a religious point of view, but being able to communicate all this to these ladies in the social science science language of StrengthsFinder and its own vocabulary and terminology and the results and the statistics and all that was a was a instantly shareable experience and an instantly shareable language for people to realize that, wow, we're in this thing together and these are the specific ways we're doing it. So I, to great. me, it's an invaluable tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah great Absolutely. feedback and, and speaking to that framework, right? Very quickly, you could cross culture, yeah. you can yeah. cross yeah. religion, yeah. you can cross uh, work barriers, you can cross, I mean, it is a bridge in a lot of ways and it gives ah. us this framework, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> well, right. Well, That's Jim, right. At, the, uh, at the summit, uh, back in July at Gallup, when I came into the big room and there was mm. such a buzz, I said to somebody, I have Stephanie, I may have even said this yeah. to you, this must be what it's going to like to feel like to be in heaven mm. with a whole bunch of people in terms of our, into ourselves, through our strengths. It was, it was a wonderful experience. Good. It was. Thank you so much. And thank you, you know, Don Clifton, thank you. And thank you to you for all you do to help keep that spark going in all of us. Yeah, well, it's exciting. We are getting ready uh, as we record this. We're getting ready to release the uh, the the sign up the for 2017. And so, as folks right. are thinking about coming, a lot more time this year to get ready and prepared for it. And and uh, and so we're excited to be doing that again. And I agree with you. That's uh, that to have that experience just kind of powers people up and charges them up. You know, we talked about rise and. And, uh, and so we're excited to be able to do that as well. Father Bill, thank you for taking a few minutes. Always great to hear uh, from those on the ground, from the soldiers on the ground that are uh, the, the, the admirals, the generals on the ground who are <laughs> yeah. leading the frontline effort. And Stephanie, as uh, those who consult on it and are helping those on the front line to be able to do that work, uh, we appreciate um, that as well. I think you've given some good light. You know, you joined us. You were on Call to Coach with Lisa, I want to say maybe two years ago. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. And that, that's probably as applicable today as it was two years ago. Um, Absolutely. Uh, but thank you for all the work that you do in our community. And if yeah. folks have questions on this, especially around the faith we, we have for our certified coaches and for our trained coaches as well, we do have a faith group inside our Yammer teams that are out there. If you want to talk about it on Facebook, it's great too. I think this is an area... When we think of Strengths Finder, I think it fits perfectly in with faith groups. And so it, it just it works very, very well. And we'd love to see more faith organizations uh, use it as well. So thank you to the both of you thank for coming you. on. I'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your emails if you have questions on this. If you have specific questions, we can forward those over to, to both Lisa or Father Bill. Send me an email, coaching at gallup.com. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program, as well as like the one I just mentioned. Uh, we've been doing, we have several hundred of these videos that are out there, and you can take a peek at them on our coaches blog. Just go to coaching.gallup.com. That blog also contains the links to our Facebook group and YouTube page, our to iTunes and RSS feeds, all our iPhone and Android apps, tons of resources available for you. you can, if you missed it, you're not looking hard enough. Coaching.gallup.com. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in becoming a certified coach, we mentioned that as well. We have a list of all our uh, courses that will lead to that um, and all the information. Courses.gallup.com if you want to head out to that site. And I mentioned earlier the 2017, the planning for the 2017 summit is coming up. Uh, you just want to watch the site. It is just cliftonstrengthsummit.com. If you found this video uh, helpful, I'd ask that you'd share it, and we'd love for you guys to do that. And uh, with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.